In this video, we're going to take a look at two processes that can be run in CAM350 on Gerber layers in order to add component information. The first of these is called Quick Part, and is probably better suited for those that are looking to just extract centroid information from a set of curvers. The second one is called reverse engineering, where we're actually going to build a CAD database from Gerber's so that it can be brought back into a particular CAD system. So let's start off by looking at quick part. I'm going to turn on the top side and the top side soap screen. I'm also going to put the soap screen on top just so it's easier to see. And I um, could make it a reference layer. I just want to make sure we weren't editing it. But uh, I don't think that's necessary. We'll just leave it like this. I'm going to zoom into a component here. And we're going to go to design and quick part. Notice that it already says pen one here. So we're going to click on pen one. Drag over to pen seven. And then if there's any pads or anything that are in the way of getting to pin eight, what you can do is you can turn this recognize inline pins off and select it and then turn it back on. And this will help you move around other bits of data that you don't want included in your pins of your component. Not necessary in this case, but I just want to show it for our reference. Once we're done with this, it says uh, right button to end. And it's going to ask me for reference designator. Go ahead and type that in. And now we've placed U101. Now we can start placing others if we can find others that have this same uh, pinout. You'll notice that I have pin numbers turned on here. This is an option, but that tells me that I've already done this component as well. So I could go now up here and place this one if I wanted to. It is pin. It is reference designator U104, so I'm just going to update that up here. You also notice some other things that you can do. You can mirror, you can turn, you have angles, um, you can rename the pattern and so forth as you're placing these. But I'm going to go up here and select uh, this particular one. Place it. And now I'm going to go up to U105 and place it. And we're done with that particular component type. Now, if I go back in and look, you'll see, notice that I have pin numbers for all those. It kind of tells me that I've done those. Now I've got some additional components, and it works the same way. If I go over here to uh, quick part again, I'm going to zoom in on this one, select my uh, first pin. Again, if I need to, I can turn that off, but we're not going to. We're just going to go ahead, finish this off, and this will be U102. Okay, and if there were any like this on the board, uh, we could add in at this time. I don't believe there's any others like this. So essentially, you would you would do this process for each component type on the board until you had all the components, both top and bottom side. built via the quick part option. If I go to the parts table, you'll see I do have those parts in here now. I could even give them uh, names and things like that, but that's more reverse engineering. What we're really trying to do here is just get the centroid information. Uh, there is uh, the ability to edit parts as well in the part editor, but again, that's more for reverse engineering than quick part. What we really typically are doing with quick part is we're going to generate a report and we're going to generate a part centroid report and as you can see it is giving that information to us which we can now export um, as a CSV file. We can also create a centroid layer. I've seen people do that at times. They basically just create a Gerber layer of the uh, centroid so that's a possibility. The bomb also gets populated here, as you can see, when we do this as well. But again, if our only purpose is to create centroid information for pick and place, 
This is how we would do it using the quick part process. Now we're going to take a look at the reverse engineering process. So back to the same place. I've gotten rid of the components I created during quick part. We're just going to start over again, this time using the reverse engineering process. Now there's some things that go along with reverse engineering that are in the setup uh, that you should be aware of. I'm not going to go through those in this video, but uh, polygons should be raster polygons. So if I turn off the fill here, looks like they are. Uh, instead of being drawn with vectors. The other one's really critical in that uh, we want the traces to end in the center of the pads. There's actually a feature, again, I'm not going to go through it here, called Net Check under the uh, Netlist tools that will go off and make sure that all of the traces are ending in the center of pads as opposed to maybe, you know, an edge or something like that. This is a limitation of the CAD databases, not necessarily a limitation of CAM350. But in order to bring this back into a CAD system, we need that uh, trace to end in the center of the pad. I'm going to turn the fill back off again, and we're going to start working on U101 again, this time using the build part option under the design ribbon. So we're going to build a part first thing it does is ask us for the reference designator. Um, and what I'm going to do, just to kind of match what the silk screen shows, I'm going to hit the T button to turn this and then select it. Okay, so it's going to put the new reference designator in that location. And then it's asking me for the component outline. So I'm just going to basically go around this component outline that's already there, and I'm ready now to place pin 1. So again, we go across. And again, in case there are some uh, additional uh, pads, I believe there's a pad right there, we're going to go ahead and turn that off and then turn it back on again and go off. And now we have identified all the pans, pins. I'm going to right click to finish it and I can correct anything that I've done wrong at this point if I want to. Um, I can also do this after the fact once I start placing these. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit create. It's going to ask me for a footprint name. And you can put that in there. And now we have built a part. So again, I'm going to go to the uh, part editor. This time you'll notice that we only have one part in there. And we can work on that part and edit it if we want to but you can see how it's built this part. We can now add this part to our design. So it's a two-step process. You're building the parts and then you're going to go back and add them. So we'll do that under the insert ribbon, insert part. We're going to choose this particular part. Click OK. Again it asked me for the uh, device name uh, this might be a little bit different than what I'm typing in here typically, but uh, I'm just going to go with the, the same as the footprint name for now. And then a reference designator. Well, we know this is U101. I'm going to click OK, and it it's puts that part into my uh, mouse here. And now I'm getting ready to click where I want to place this. Uh, right button to confirm. And now we have added a part. And then again, once we built one part, we can now add that somewhere else. Uh, I could index this to U104 if I want to. It automatically indexes by one. So if you do have sequential reference designators of similar parts, you may want to start with the lowest number and add them. Again, click right click, right click, and we've added another part. We'll go back up to 105. It did index properly there, so 105, click, right click, right click, and I'm going to hit escape to get out of the command. So if I do a redraw now, you can see I've placed those parts. It's actually created a new reference designator layer too with just those parts on it. Okay. 
So this is the reverse engineering process. And you would continue this for every component on the board. You have to do it in two stages. You have to build the parts, which get added to your part library, and then you have to place the parts. Once you're done with that whole process, you could, just like we did with Quick Part, uh, go to Reports and get a Centroid report. Obviously, this took a little more work than the Quick Part did, but you notice we have additional information in there. Uh, we also create a bill of materials by doing this. Okay. And then the idea would be that we would eventually export this once it's completely built into a CAD format. Now, sometimes that could be as simple as something like GenCAD or ODB++ or even IPC 2581. But not a lot of CAD systems will accept those as imports. So what we've done is we've made PADS the export format of choice for reverse engineering because most CAD systems have a PADS importer. So instead of writing the, you know, the interface for every CAD system out there, we basically use the PADS interface. We can write that out and then you can bring it into uh, Mentor's PADS product or Expedition or uh, you know, uh, Cadence or Altium because they all have PADS importers. But that is the process for reverse engineering. Uh, again, it's, uh, it's an involved process. If you have 100, component, 100 different components, you're going to have to create 100 different components and then add those components to your design. But sometimes this is the only option you have other than redrawing the entire database. Again, I just want to give you a quick overview of the reverse engineering process. Uh, you can find more information in the help system on this. And we even have tutorials out on our website that were written by customers on doing this process as well. They basically go into the idea of uh, making sure your pads have traces in the center of them, raster polygons, and some of the other setup issues that I mentioned earlier. This is the reverse engineering and quick part options in CAM 350 and DFM stream.